What's up, Taiwan? I'm Eric Gao with 10 minutes of news from here in Taiwan and around the world. Starting off with Cross Strait news, over 100 Taiwanese seafood companies have found themselves locked out of the China market due to customs paperwork. As John Van Trieste reports, it's their latest challenge selling to China after Beijing banned some Taiwan fish earlier in the year. For fishermen like these, China is an important source of income. But access to the Chinese market isn't guaranteed. China claims Taiwan is part of its territory. Since June, China has banned imports of several types of fish from Taiwan in moves seen as politically motivated. And now there's a new issue, paperwork. Over 100 Taiwanese seafood producers have submitted documents that China requires, but they haven't received a response. Taiwan's government has promised to step in and help. From January to November, 14% of Taiwan's Pacific sari and 68% of its four-finger threadfin went to China. That's nearly 7,000 tons of fish. But not all seafood producers are concerned that bans on these and other seafood products will be permanent. Taiwan's top China policymaker, the Mainland Affairs Council, says it won't speculate about whether China is using the customs issue as a pretext to add pressure on Taiwan. But it has issued a protest, showing that the seafood issue in Taiwan-China ties isn't going away anytime soon. Eason Pan and John Van Trieste for Taiwan Plus. Over in the U.S., the House of Representatives has overwhelmingly backed a bill that would provide Taiwan with 10 billion U.S. dollars in security assistance. The U.S. House passed the 2023 National Defense Authorization Act by 350 votes to 80. The bill will now move to a vote in the Senate. If signed into law, Taiwan will receive 2 billion U.S. dollars in security grants each year for the next five years. Other measures include authorizing a regional stockpile of weapons for Taiwan in the event of conflict. Back in Taiwan, the government will lift its cap on weekly international arrivals on Saturday. It's another step as the country eases its COVID-19 restrictions. Taiwan's health authorities have been gradually raising the limit on how many people can enter the country each week. They expect the number of inbound travelers to surge during the winter and lunar New Year holidays. Arrivals must still follow self-health management rules for the first seven days in Taiwan, avoiding crowded places and public transportation. They also must declare any COVID symptoms they've had in the two weeks before coming to Taiwan. A new exhibition in Taipei is displaying clothes worn by survivors of sexual assault. The university students behind this say they want to end the culture of victim blaming that people face when they report attacks. Stash Butler has more. Bright surroundings with dark stories inside. Songshan Cultural and Creative Park's new show, The Ideal Victim, has a serious message at its heart. It's often the first question victims of sexual assault are asked. What were you wearing when it happened? This exhibition aims to undermine that question by answering it. Every piece of clothing on display here was worn by a survivor of sexual violence at the time of their attack. From a school uniform to swimwear, each item has a tale to tell. Its size, a painful reminder of the owner's age. Curator Vivian Liao tells one of those stories, the story of a girl called May. This May May's story is just one of dozens collected by Vivian and her team, who are mostly university students. Assistant designer Xilena Chen, herself a victim of assault, says collecting them has taken a toll. Wu Ziying's organization, the Modern Women's Foundation, is sponsoring the exhibition. 
She says victim blaming makes the problem of sexual violence worse. 当我们一直在去把所谓的这个责任放在被害者身上的时候，我们也就助长了这整个社会就是在加害的这样的情境。In Taiwan, women and girls make up about 80% of sexual assault victims, and boys and men about 20%. Where the gender of the attacker is known, about 90% are male and 10% female. The number of assaults reported has changed dramatically over the last 14 years. Rising from about 7,000 in 2008 to 12,000 in 2012, before falling again to about 8,000 last year. But statistics only tell one part of the story. The exhibition is a chance for people to talk openly without judgment about an issue often cloaked in guilt and shame. Guest speaker Annie Zhang says it took her years to tell her story. In 2012, I was in the last year in my college and I experienced the rap in the campus. After so many years, Taiwan is still facing like the same situation. There are still rape happens uh, like frequently and it's not like something far away from our daily life. Like my friends experience that, I experience that. I, and some of my f students also experience that. Breaking the silence can help teach people about the scale of the problem. But it's not just about education. For Annie Zhang, sharing her story is a way to heal. What I do is not just for others. Half of the reason is for myself because I was treated badly and I couldn't do anything for me in the past. But now I can do something I think is right. The Ideal Victims exhibition undercuts the notions of victim blaming or shaming someone for how they dress. But more than that, it's a space for survivors to come to terms with what happened, to speak up, and to help give others the courage to do the same. Karma Xu, Sandy Chi, and Stash Butler for Taiwan Plus. Taiwan's representative to Lithuania has been named as one of the 28 most influential individuals in Europe by the German US newspaper Politico. Politico said diplomat Eric Huang was on Europe's front line in the tussle between the US and China. Taiwan and Lithuania have forged closer ties this year, despite opposition from Beijing. In November last year, Huang oversaw the opening of a de facto Taiwanese embassy in Lithuania's capital, Vilnius. This angered China, which claims Taiwan as part of its territory and protests any recognition of Taiwan as a country. Taiwan's executive branch has passed an amendment mandating rooftop solar panels on certain buildings. The amendment to Taiwan's renewable energy development laws would require the panels on new buildings and refurbished older buildings that meet certain criteria. It's part of a push to increase Taiwan's solar capacity and reduce its carbon footprint. Taiwan is aiming to reach net zero emissions by 2050. Solar power accounted for only about 3% of all electricity produced in Taiwan in 2021. Most of the country's electricity came from coal and gas-fired power plants. The bill still needs to pass in the legislature before coming into law. Google has published its 2022 list of Taiwan's most searched words or terms for the year. 1922, the hotline number of Taiwan's Centers for Disease Control, took the top spot. This was followed by Ukraine, earthquake, pandemic, and World Cup. Three of Taiwan's 10 most searched words this year were related to COVID-19. Thank you for watching What's Up Taiwan. Remember to download the Taiwan Plus app for more stories from Taiwan and around the world. Finally today, we leave you with images of hundreds of Santa Clauses racing through a village near Berlin, Germany. I'm Eric Gao. Take care and see you next time.